today we're going to be talking about Integra chassis codes. So basically, if you didn't know already, all the chassis code is, is a three digit number, sometimes longer, and the actual VIN number of your car. And that basically tells you what kind of car you have, what kind of engine it comes with, also when was it made, the year it was made, or something like that, and a bunch of other stuff that I really don't want to get into because I'm not 100% on it. But you guys get the gist of it. So starting things off with the DC1, if you've already seen my 10 things you didn't know about Integra's video, don't click that link. But if you haven't seen it, definitely click that link right here. And it'll take you to that video of where I talk more in depth about the DC-1. But basically, all I'm going to say here is the DC-1 was not offered in the United States. It was offered pretty much everywhere else. Uh, but basically, all it was was a single overhead cam Integra. And it was automatic, never to be offered in manual. So that sucks. But then again, single overhead cam should be in an Integra anyway. Next up, we have the DC-2 Integra, which everybody seems to think they have and all they search for. So if you go into the tags on Instagram, I do it too, you're gonna see it's nothing but DC2, 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 because everybody thinks they have a DC2 and that's what everybody searches for, DC2. Uh, but the DC2 only has a B18C1 motor and a B18C5 motor, which is the GSR and the Type R, or the SIRG if you're, you know, in Japan, or the, the uh, VXI, or I don't know. I don't know all, the, all of the different variations of the GSR, but you guys get the point. Next up we have the DC-4. Now the DC-4 is only offered in the United States and that came with the V18-B1 non vtec engine. So if you have a non vtec engine in your car and your title has DC-4 in it, then you have an LS. So we're going to keep going in order here. Now the DC-5, if you didn't know already, was an Integra. They just kept the name in Japan, but then they switched it over here in America, uh, which was stupid because everywhere else is called an Integra. I don't know why we do things different, but hey, it's, it's, it's accurate, so it's whatever. But basically that's an Integra and it has a K20 motor in it. And it's, it was kind of crappy. The Type S was also kind of crappy. Uh, we never got the Type R in that model, so that kind of sucks. But, I mean, you get what you can get, and that's all I have to say about that. The DB6, once again, not offered in the United States, offered everywhere else except here. And basically, like I said before, single overhead cam sedan. That's all it is. All right, and the DB7 was the sedan version of the LS. Nothing special about that. Standard car, just with an LS engine. Nothing more to say about that. All right, next up we have the DB8. Now, the DB8 was basically a Type R version, but in sedan form. I believe it was only offered in Japan, but I'm not 100% on that, so don't quote me on that. Just saying, DB8, DC2, same thing, except one's a two-door, one's a four-door. If you have kids, get a DB8. If you don't have kids, get a DC2. Now, the DB9 will always be probably one of my favorite, most favorite Integras. Uh, and that is because of its drivetrain system. Basically, it's a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive type of system that has some serious potential if you actually think about it. Just imagine driving a K20 swapped Integra with four-wheel drive. You know, that has some serious potential. It's like having a Subaru, but with Honda reliability, if that makes any sense. I'm not sure how it will perform at high speed, so then again, that's a downside, but it can be worked on, tweaked, and perfected. Uh, as any car, so that's always something to note. Please stop calling your DC4s DC2s and your DC1s DC2s because it's not. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.